So I think I kind of introduced me. <laughs> I'm, I'm Raik. I'm a developer in the OpenBSD project um, for more than 10 years now. I mostly like to work in the networking area, and uh, that's a lot of stuff there. I think I have one comment in X as well. And <laughs> so, um, and yeah, actually for a living, I'm running a company that does networking with OpenBSD. But I didn't start working on OpenBSD uh, because of the company. It was the other way around, and so I'm in a lucky position that I can do what I like as my work. And we have a team of a few people who also work in OpenBSD. So that's a fun part of it. Uh, but of course, we also have to deal with customers and requests that are not really uh, the, um, identical to the uh, requests you have in the open source world. So today, I want to talk about HTTPD. It is still fairly new. Um, it showed up about a year ago. And it's the new web server in OpenBSD. HTTPD um, is included in OpenBSD since the 5.6 release. It was started just two weeks before the 5.6 release was finished. And we decided, oh, let's, let's get it in because it's in it's very new, so it doesn't harm, and uh, uh, so we, we had it in 5.6, but then it really matured in 5.7, which is uh, relatively new. 5.7 was released in, uh, in May. You have this nice Blues Brothers theme in 5.7, so buy CDs, go online, have a look where you can order it that's uh, supporting the OpenBSD project. So why do we need a web server in our base system? Actually, OpenBSD uh, has a website, and we want to serve the OpenBSD page, which is in a very nice 1990s HTML layout still. Um, but we, we do need a web server for it to, uh, to provide this page. We also have mirrors for. Uh, the, the packages, the, the ISO images, and so on. And some of them actually already switched to HTTPD um, because some of them are, are hosted on OpenBSD as well. Not, not all of the, um, hang on, people are tweeting me, so I have to turn this off. Uh, <laughs> Not, not all of the OpenBSD mirrors are running on OpenBSD, but actually many of them. So we do have a need for a web server in OpenBSD. Um, but, but users maybe also want to use, set up OpenBSD and serve their own cat page so they can just install OpenBSD, run HTTPD, and put their cat pictures there. Um, this is a real page that I found just by Googling at the cat gift page. I think it's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you, we want to serve it securely, that nobody breaks in and put dog pictures there or something like that. We do have a looking glass for BGPD in our base system. Um, it's a simple CGI. That, that I wrote some time ago. And so it's not enabled by default, but it's shipped with every OpenBSD release. So just to provide a starting point, some uh, exchange points are running BGPD, and, and they conveniently want to provide a looking glass, usually, to see what's going on, to do lookups, and so And um, for that, we, we need a web server, actually. Otherwise. We would have to move this into ports, but I, I like to have things on the base system, actually. 
I, I rarely use ports except for like window manager and all that and, and the browser. But uh, for the networking tools, it's nice to have this in the base system in OpenBSD. So OpenBSD has a long history of web servers in the base system and the web server changed a few times. So i give you a brief history. In 1998, um, OpenBSD introduced or imported Apache um, based on 1.3 release series, I think, or was it even 1.1? No, it's 1.3. I think Bob Beck did it. So OpenBSD 2.3 is like a long time ago. It's very close still to, uh, to the um, foundation of OpenBSD, which happened, I think, in 95. We're going to have our 20th uh, birthday this year with the upcoming 5.8 release. So um, almost in, in the very beginning of OpenBSD, we imported a web server. Um, Apache 1.3 became old and we could not go to Apache 2 because Apache 2 has this Apache 2 license which does not fit in our licensing. Um, it, it, it has some like weird requirement that would not work in OpenBSD. So we, we kept using Apache 1.3 and it, it became a fork. Um, mostly Henning Brower cleaned up the Apache 1.3 and OpenBSD. Um, he threw out stuff like Aptic support or um, VMS or something like that. And we, we had it uh, hardened, like doing uh, change root by default and a few other things. So the OpenBSD Apache was quite different from the upstream version. In 2011, some people decided that Nginx is a cool thing now, but actually Apache was getting very old and there weren't any other requirements that, uh, under a BSD license that were like small and uh, nicely designed and Nginx was imported at this time. And then it took a while, March 2014, actually last year, when uh, Apache was removed and Nginx became the, the new default web server in OpenBSD. So last year, in um, Ljubljana <laughs> in Slovenia, we had an, a general hackathon. It, it really it surprises me right now that it was last August because it's so far away. But anyway, so. Uh, we were on this hackathon and um, the, uh, we, we looked at the um, code base to, to replace uh, a few things to, to um, improve the security of our um, software on the base tree to, to use like better uh, memory allocation and, and, and many other things. I'll give more examples later. And I looked at Nginx and it was not really easy to adapt our changes to Nginx without creating a, a big um, patch for it. So somehow I got frustrated and said, well, I, I wrote RelayD. So RelayD is almost a web server because it has some HTTP support and it does like all this asynchronous I.O., which is the nice part of uh, Nginx, and RelayD is doing this for a long time as well. So I sat down one day and um, stripped down RelayD, renamed the directory, and removed everything that is not needed, like the health checking and so on, and added support by, for serving files. And at the same day, um, I, I had a web server. And so it happened that we decided to use it instead of Nginx. So Nginx had a very short time in OpenBSD, actually. So 
in, in Japan, I had a title like Security Shokunen, but I think here I, I'm using a German term like Sicherheitshandwerkskunst, which basically means security craftsmanship in German. Um, as I heard that you like all long words. So, <laughs> so we constantly improve our code base uh, for security and quality. That's the nice thing in OpenBSD. It's not just like we, a graveyard of, of code. Something that is in the base system is something that's supposed to be reviewed and um, modified to, to, to have like, like a common thing. Like we, we, if we introduce a new security API or the allocate, allocator or somewhere else, we, we go um, through the tree and adopt it everywhere. So all the time. And then last year, all these things like heart bleed and, and shell shock happened. And one response was to, to create the LibreSSL fork, basically. Um, I was kind of involved in that. I was a messenger. Like I talked to CEO and CEO said, yeah, sure, convince the people to do it. And I did. And then <laughs> it happened. So I convinced uh, other developers. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm not so active in the development of LibreSSL, but at least I had the messenger role and I'm, I'm still alive. So. <laughs> So in the reaction to that, we also introduced like realloc array, for example. That's one um, function that is supposed to reply um, unsafe array allocations, where you do like uh, uh, you want to allocate an array, and then you write in, for example, C alloc with n times m in it, and um, these array allocations are possibly vulnerable to overflows. And realloc array is a, is a new function we have in OpenBSD that, that does a bounce shaking internally. So if you allocate an array that none of the values would overflow the, the integer, basically. So it's a protection against uh, some attacks that happened. And I try to adopt this to Nginx because Nginx allocates pools and arrays all over the place, and they just assume that the kernel will always give you like values that cannot overflow and like these, it is safe, we can just safely assume it is, is something we don't really like to do. We want to explicitly check is there an overflow or not and not say, no, this cannot happen. So I tried to apply it to Nginx and the disk got big and um, we couldn't get it upstream. So we did not want to maintain it in OpenBSD ourselves. So it just, I throw away the work and we yeah, intended to use Nginx as it is. So that's one tweet I, I wrote the next day after um, I wrote HTTPD and at the same da day, well, very late the day, um, Bob Beck and Theo Durat gave me some beer and said, okay, can you import this web server into OpenBSD? I was scared. I mean, it was just new. And it's, uh, everyone knows that as a developer, writing a web server is, is like what everyone does who learns uh, programming language. Web server is like the hello world of networking tools. So you don't really do it. So I wrote this, this server, and then suddenly CEO and Bob are pushing me to get it in the tree, and the beer helped. <laughs> so next day, I woke up and realized that I had committed a web server. <laughs> so um, in the beginning, we had HTTPD. It was not yet enabled. I worked on it for like two weeks in an insane uh, run basically, uh, just me. Um, after the hackathon, I went home and I, I didn't do any other work and my, my family didn't really see me. So I, I had this two weeks when I um, got the web server in a, in, a, in a state that it was usable. There were some 
issues still, but it was usable for basic setups already. And so CU said, okay, so we enable it. So first we import stuff in the tree, but it's not linked to the build. It sits there with a make file, but then when enabling it, it gets compiled and it becomes part of the snapshots and, and releases. So in 5.6 it showed up, actually. Um, we had TLS support contributed by Joel Singh. The basic file serving and fast CGI was contributed by Florian Obser. Everything within these two weeks. But of course, we continued working on it. This is not the current state. So the design, simplicity is the goal. Um, HTTPD is designed to be a simple and secure web server. I mean, maybe these days everyone claims to be secure and simple, but then I, I did some research looking at other servers and, and none of them really satisfied me. So it's not that I really wanted to write my own. It's like the frustration with, with others. Nginx, for example, started fairly small, but more features got added over the time and vendors and all these influence. So it's not simple anymore. It, it's quite big. And, and other ones are even light D is, is not simple anymore. It's not light anymore. Yeah. So HTTPD should remain simple. Have like the basic task to serve static files, do fast CGI for dynamic content, do proper TLS like securely, and some other core features uh, should be built in um, directory listing, of course, logging, basic authentication. So the current code is allowed uh, um, elf, uh, 11K. Um, that's from current, actually. Can you, can you read this, or is it too light? I, I don't know. So the, the different files, including the documentation and the, or the man page and the make file, so it's, it's not big, actually. It's, the task was not to write the smallest web server possible. This design includes like privilege separation and, and, and proper um, design, actually. So it's not just I write a web server in one file. It's, it's solid, actually. So for, for that, what it does, it's fairly small. A few features. So, of course, it does static files and directories. Then we do support fast CGI. Um, it is secure by design. For example, in OpenBSD, we had to patch Apache, the web server, to run in a change route by default. I'm not sure if anyone is doing this by default. In OpenBSD, we're doing it for years. So the web server is dropping privilege and change roads to an OpenBSD slash var slash dub dub dub. So in OpenBSD shell shock is not possible by design unless you copy a, um, a shell binary to, to the, the web server root. Um, so accessing like etc or etc as I learned uh, files is not possible with a change routed web server. And in most cases, this is totally fine. We had this patch for Nginx for some time, and for some reason it didn't get accepted as well, but okay, fine, we are used to that. We, we maintain it for Nginx ourselves. Um, but HTTP is the first web server that I know of that is designed to be change routed. So you cannot turn it off. If you need to access etc, then, then you can change route to slash maybe, but uh, <laughs> it, it is not intended to be uh, yeah, un, un change routed or something like that. Um, it's doing more than change route. It's doing privilege separation. I will show this later. TLS is there, of course, um, specifically for LibreSSL. You might be able to compile it with OpenSSL, but some of the API extensions that we have in LibreSSL are used by HTTPD. So HTTPD is really 
like the um, reference implementation for our TLS library. I talk about this later. Virtual servers, of course, uh, reconfiguration on the fly, so um, you don't have to kill and restart. You can just reload the configuration by keeping it running. Logging via syslog uh, or um, files, of course, so you don't have to buy a pro version to do syslog logging. It's I integrated, actually. Um, you, we have some basic rules to, to block and drop connections. And then uh, a user contributed uh, support for s streaming, so byte ranges, actually. It's a really nice thing uh, that happened um, not so long ago. So byte ranges will be in 5.8. It's not yet in 5.7. Then I have something, I think, unique. I have this pink label in, in GitHub. I, I use GitHub not for the development. The development is happening in OpenBSD CVS. I use GitHub for the issue tracking. So in the issue tracker, you can create labels for like won't fix and whatever. And I created a label feature writers um, to mark feature requests from users that are out of our scope just to remind us that this feature is not intended to be an HTTPD. And then if anyone shows up and asks for that feature again, I can simply point of it. Actually, the user community learned it very quickly that, uh, oh, could you add this feature or is it considered to be feature riders? So I think it's a really good thing that people get an awareness that not every feature is going to be in the software. Um, so tracking the things that we are not going to implement, the not to do list is, I think, something really nice and it works really well. On the other hand, uh, there's hope. Um, some of the requests are rejected now, but maybe I change my mind at some point, right? Just to have like a future release. I, I was thinking about Apple, like a major feature is missing in the initial release, and I say, no way, and then maybe in a year it shows up and everyone is excited again, so. <laughs> but what we're not planning to implement is other C CGI interfaces in addition to fast CGI, and people are having long arguments with that why, why UWSGI is so much better with Python, and you have this other framework, and blah, blah, blah. But actually, normally you can use fast CGI, and the implementation in HTTP of fast CGI is actually very fast. It's not writing the output of the CGI to a temporary file to serve it to the internet. It's streaming it directly. So, um, it doesn't make sense for us to add multiple latest and greatest CGI protocols. Um, for authentication, we do support basic authentication, but there is no plans to add support for LDAP or something like that. If you need this, then install Nginx from ports. Nginx is still really powerful and a good software. And so for advanced use cases, it's still in our ports tree. For the basic things, HTTPD is probably the preferred option in OpenBSD already. We don't support modules, plugins, HTTP2 support, yeah, I agree. That's one of the rare cases when I agree with PHK. He, he wrote something in the ACMQ, I think, about HTTP2 and why he's not going to support it in uh, Varnish. And the protocol is insane, actually. So I don't know. Some people want it somehow, or it would probably make sense in RelayD to do HTTP2 to HTTP1 relaying or something like that. And our asynchronous design allows HTTP2 support, but it's madness. So I don't know. I have no convincing arguments to, to implement it. Or, and we are not going to support regular expressions. Um, that's what people are whining about, but I'm not doing it. But so rewrites are not possible. Security, 
It runs change rooted by default, as I said. Um, it uses privilege separation. So three processes, the parent that loads the configuration, open socket, loads keys and all that. The, the server handles the HTTP connects. We, you can have multiple server processes and the logger is uh, an extra process for logging. Um, we try also from a design point of view, don't reinvent the, the wheel, don't uh, use our own string APIs. We use libc whenever possible. Even if there is like a possible minor performance trade-off, um, I prefer to use libc functions. For example, in um, Nginx optimized uh, HTTP parser, there are like individual uh, string comparison functions depending on the number of arguments. Or I don't quite remember the names, but there's a str com for uh, five uh, characters and then there's our str com for four characters and it's like it's super optimized and it's, it's very fast um, but in OpenBSD we like to use our libc because then we can tweak something in our default libraries and everything benefits from it and we don't have to look into all these specific places. As we know from OpenSSL that's actually also a good idea. OpenSSL used its own memory allocator. I think it's probably still doing that, but we threw it out in LibreSSL. LibreSSL is using the system malloc. So LibreSSL is not doing the exploit mitigation mitigation uh, anymore that OpenSSL used to do. Actually, it, it surprised me a lot that a few months after we, we did this in uh, OpenSSL and, and removed it from, from the LibreFog that I found all these custom allocators in the other web server. So, okay, that's a design decision for performance. It makes sense there, but we don't want that. We want our hardened malloc that does randomization and um, use after free detection and so on. So the privilege separation are really processes that communicate with each other. The parent forks them on the beginning and then they just run. There's no respawning or something like that. You can configure the, the number of server processes and then each server process handles um, the, the connection with asynchronous I.O. So there's no threading involved or something like that. And the server processes, for example, don't have write access to the log files. They send a message to the log process. Basically, the nice side effect is uh, you can have multiple server processes and the messages to the single logger get serialized because of the messaging and the performance is still really good. So um, we, we, we can open log files with the right privileges that are compatible to the other web servers, but the, the server processes don't have to touch them. And there are some other things. So the server process, for example, they also run with an unprivileged user. They, they, they cannot do anything uh, harmful. And if we ever need another thing, we might add another privileged process. Uh, in, in RelayD, for example, we have another process for the RSA private keys. Uh, and in OpenSMTPD, I didn't add that to HTTPD yet, but I will at some point. So um, when we did it in libtls. So LibreSSL added a new API on top of libSSL. It, in the beginning, it was called libreSSL, but this was a quite confusing because libreSSL sounds like LibreSSL, but um, <laughs> but it is actually a part of LibreSSL. So now it's called libtls simply, and it's basically an API on top of it, but it's so easy to use. You should really have a look at it. You can write TLS clients or servers in just a few lines, and it 
does everything right. So Joel Singh is, is doing the, the major work there and I'm doing it from a reference implementation point of view. So um, in HTTPD, we decided instead of using libssl directly, the old API that you know from OpenSSL, we, we use libtls. So this also helps to shrink the size of HTTPD. And by default, it only does TLS 1.2 for some months now and only strong ciphers and so on. So LockGem, for example, wasn't an issue for HTTPD. Fast CGI, as I said, was contributed by Florian Obser, uh, another German. <laughs> I asked him, can you give me a quote for the presentation? Why did you implement fast CGI? And he said, I implemented slow CGI that was the CGI wrapper that we had before. I implemented slow CGI because you didn't stop whining on ICB that NGINX can't execute BGP LG. And fast CGI in HTTPD, Bob has asked me if I can help you with it. So a little bit back when we removed Apache, there was no run to run the BGP looking glass anymore because it is a classic CGI. And NGINX is not supporting the classic CGI interface, which is the right way to do. So we needed a fast CGI support in the BGP looking glass or a fast CGI wrapper. So Florian showed up and wrote this slow CGI, which is basically uh, a little server that helps you to run traditional CGIs and then talks with fast CGI to the uh, web server. And he used this code later because it's a new implementation of, of the fast CGI protocol without depending on the official libraries and all this bloat. So he used this to, to write the fast CGI server code for HTTPD, um, which works really, really well. And we do, as I said, direct streaming. There's no intermediate buffering to a file. The configuration, that's also an example. Um, I hope you can read it the next slide. I will give you an example of the basic web server configuration. So you open a text file and put that in the text file httpd.conf and then it's working. Okay? That's all you need. Actually, I'm thinking about making the listen on port 80 as a default as well. So, <laughs> so you can run it with an empty file or something like that, but that's a minimum requirement. So, yes? Is there a syntax yet that lets me message every possible host name? Like server star? Yes, yes, yeah. We don't do reg regex, but we at the moment we do support uh, the um, FN match globbing rules. So you can do like shell, shell white cards basically. Um, what people also do is like you do star dot example dot com and as virtual hosts. Um, on that note, because you probably think that is hello world, I just looked on my own server where I'm running five virtual domains, including um, online man manual page display with man CGI. In So, and since then, we even added uh, like name based aliases and all that that helped to reduce it further in my case. So, that's a bit more advanced. For example, you can include an external MIME types file. If you don't do it, it, it provides a list of the most common types like HTML, JPEG, JavaScript, and just. Otherwise, you can just use the existing mine.types files compatible to the Apache slash NGINX uh, format there. For that, we even 
for the MIME types, we even pass these semicolons at the end of the line because, as you see, we don't need semicolons at the end of the line. Why? The grammar is um, using the same parser that pfctl does, uh, path.y, pf, or bgpd, relayd. We, we use it in, in many places in OpenBSD right now. That's our unified configuration, actually. Without breaking ls, <coughs> Um, we, we can, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so no, without using an external library or something like this in OpenBSD, we just reuse this pass.y code that originated from um, PS parser, and then we, we use it in all the other new daemons, BGPD, NTPD even, RelayD, all of them. And so you can use macros like in PF. Uh, you don't have to write semicolons at the end of the line, and it's very similar. Um, some advanced configuration. It's very bright, anyway. Um, so you can listen on multiple ports. You can also add um, additional server names for, for name-based aliases. Logging is enabled by de default, but can turn it off. Locations, is uh, the matching is also using FN match at the moment. As I said, we're not going to do re regular expressions. So there are a few options. They're all documented on the MAN page. As usual in OpenBSD, I think the MAN page is in a really good shape um, so that you can understand what it's doing and it's not like long and you don't have to pick it from the web page or so. It's just do manhgpd.conf. Um, blocking rules are supportive or for redirections. You can redirect and so on. Fast CGI, a few other options. It works well in combination with PHP, FPM, of course, but also with, with many other frameworks. Future work, that is a, um, that's very new, actually. Not even all of the OpenBSD developers know about it because it hasn't been released yet. Um, CEO is working together with me and a few other developers. Uh, the most of the work was done by, I forgot his name, was it Nick M? Uh, and you will figure out when it's released. So somebody in OpenBSD implements something. CEO is designing it. We, we're working on a new framework to improve privilege separation and to further draw privileges, but it's designed in a way that it's practical. It's a practical approach. It's easy to use. So basically, the kernel limits uh, the, the uh, interfaces to a subset that of, of the POSIX and the environment that you need in the individual process, and it works really well with privilege separation. For example, HTTPD's logger process doesn't have to open any network sockets, so we, can, we have a class, basically, that we can drop. It's much easier and uh, better designed than like SysTrace, for example, or the, the, the other things in other systems. Um, it's not trying to solve every possible problem. It's trying to be a practical, practical approach. So stay tuned, actually. It will be really nice, and um, we will use it everywhere, actually. So more features are uh, in preparation, like the SNI support. Is, I promised it before, but it, it will come. Rewrites, well. Not with uh, regular expressions, but we found a very nice way, and that is currently being investigated, so that we can do rewrites and advanced matching, um, but with a matching language that, that I can understand, where I can read the source code and know what's going on. Uh, I think I asked Michael Lucas, what do you think about regular expressions? And he said, oh, people are asking me all the time to write a book about regex, but 
why do we have to write a book about it <laughs> so when it's so complicated in the first place? And I don't want to use something in HTTPD just for the pattern matching where you have to read books and books to get it right. So we found something else and I hope that I can release more information about it soon. But actually I just started looking at it yesterday. <laughs> So yeah, this Tame, I think tame in, in English, I think in, in, in Japanese it also has a nice meaning. So, <laughs> um, so tame uh, will limit the privileges of each process. So you can decide that the server process is not able to, I don't know, do change the, the system time or for the logger, I think the example is good that it doesn't have to open any network sockets and so on. So this uh, is once again very easy to use and it will further improve the security of HTTPD but it's not specifically for HTTPD, mostly everything in base will use it. Yeah, so OpenBC 5.7 was released in May buy the CDs, support the project, and have a look at the funding campaign for this year. And buy off beer, actually. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>